In this video, we'll be talking about the equation of a line. There's three main ways to represent a line. The easiest way to represent a line is with an equation. y equals mx plus b. In the work we've done previously, we know that b can be the initial value. and M represents the slope of a line. Second way we have of representing a line is with a graph. So I could draw any line on my graph. And we know a few things about this line. We know that the point where it crosses the y-axis is its initial value, which is b. And that point has a unique name. We'll call that point from now on the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the point on the y-axis where the line crosses. The other thing we know just by looking at the graph is the slope. So I could pick any two points on the graph, find the rise and the run. And when I calculate the slope by dividing rise by the run, it doesn't matter what two points I pick, the slope will be consistent across the entire line. So that would be the m value, the slope. The third way we have of representing the equation of a line is with a table of values. And we saw previously that when the x value is 0, the y value corresponds to the y-intercept, the b-value, the initial value. You should have noticed that as we go up our table of values in increments of 1, we add the m-value. So our next point would be b plus m, and then b plus 2m's and so on. And when we go backwards, we subtract the m value. b minus m, b minus 2m. And those are our three main ways of representing the equation of a line. With an actual equation, where we know what the slope is and what the y-intercept is. With a graph, where we can look at the graph and see the y-intercept and calculate the slope or with a table of values. So we need to be able to move between each of the three representations of a line. First we'll look at how to take an equation and quickly graph it. We can always make a table of values and graph those points, but sometimes that will take too long. When we're looking at a straight line, we have an easier shortcut. We know that 3 represents the slope, and negative 5 represents the initial value or the y-intercept. So our method for graphing is two steps. To plot on the graph the y-intercept. So I'll find negative 5 on the y-axis, plot that point. And next, we need to use the slope to find a second point. So how can we use the slope to find a second point? We know that the slope 
is equal to 3. Remember, that's really 3 over 1. And these two numbers tell us the rise and the run. So from my initial value, negative 5, I'm rising 3 and I'm running 1. So up 3 over 1. And I can keep doing that if I need to, up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1 to get a series of points. But really, when you're graphing a straight line, you just need one additional point. And we connect that with a straight line. And there is our equation to a graph. So we plotted the y-intercept at negative 5. We used the slope, which was 3 over 1, to figure out our next point by rising 3 and running by 1. And we just kept doing that, connected the points to make our line. Sometimes we need to go from a graph to an equation. And we can do that too. First thing we do is identify by looking at the graph, the y-intercept. So if I look at the graph, I have a y-intercept of positive 5. Next I calculate the slope. So I can find any other point that I think I can read clearly. It looks like I'm going down 5 and over 8. So my rise is negative 5 and my run is positive 8. The reason that I identify the y-intercept and calculate the slope which is negative 5 eighths. It's because I plug these values into my equation y equals mx plus b. So my equation would be y equals negative 5 eighths x plus 5. If I want to take a table and convert it to a graph I look at the data that's in the table, all the points in the table. Remember that these are pairs of x and y coordinates. So I have a point at negative 2 and 2. I have a point at 1 and negative 4. And I take all these points and I simply just plot them on a grid. Going from a table to a graph is fairly straightforward. I just take my points and plot them. And vice versa, if I'm going from a graph to a table, I look at the graph to find a, a series of points and I record them in a table. To go from a, an equation to a table, I first start by setting up my table and we can maybe start with a value of negative 1 go up to maybe positive 3 and then I take those x values and one by one I sub the x values into the equation. For example, if I sub negative 1 into the equation for x I have y equals positive 3 plus 10 when I multiply, which equals 13. And then I record that information in my table for the y value. And I do it again. y equals negative 3 times 0 plus 10. And as I simplify this, I end up with positive 10. Eventually, you'll see a pattern you should notice that we're decreasing by 3 every time, which is the slope. 
And so eventually we can stop substituting into the equation and just fill in the rest of the table by subtracting three for every step of the table. And lastly, we need to be able to convert from a table to an equation. And this might be the trickiest of the six methods to do. So if I look at my table, the first thing I want to do is use that information to calculate the slope. And I will do that by picking any two points. So I'll start with the point at 1 and 5 and the point at 3 and 11. And let's identify the point with the lowest x value as the point x1, y1. And the point with the highest x value as x2, y2. There's another equation for slope that we're going to use here, and that is slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So my point 1 and 5 is associated with x1 and y1, and my point 3 and 11 is associated with x2 and y2. And I'm going to sub that information in to my slope equation. So y2 is equal to 11. y1 is equal to 5. x2 is equal to 3. x1 is equal to 1. And I simplify. So 11 take away 5 is 6. 3 take away 1 is 2. My slope ends up being 3. So now that I know the slope is equal to 3, I take my equation y equals mx plus b, and I substitute in for m the value 3. And here's the challenge. I don't yet know my y-intercept. But I can find it. I can pick any point, and I can sub it in for x and y. So I'll pick the point 4 and 14. So I'll sub the point 4 and 14 into my equation. So y is equal to 14, x is equal to 4, and now I have an equation where I can algebraically solve for b. So 14 equals 12 plus b. Bring the 14 to the other side, 14 take away 12, is equal to b, or b equals 2. And this will work for any point that you pick, as long as you do the math right. So now I know my slope is 3, I know my y-intercept is 2, I can sub that y-intercept back into my equation, and there we go. My equation from this table is y equals 3x plus 2. Finally, two special cases, horizontal and vertical lines. These are special cases because they're not quite like the other situations we've looked at. So here I have a horizontal line that's going through 5 on the y-axis. This is the graph. The equation for this situation would be y equals 5. The y value is always equal to 5. Which means when I create my table of values, x and y, it doesn't matter what x is, negative 1, 0, 1, or 2, the y value is always 5. So if I have a horizontal line through any point, the equation is y equals the point the line is going through. And my table of values, x can be anything, y is always the value that the line is going through. And vice versa, here I have a vertical line going through the point negative 3. 
And this is slightly different now because it's a vertical line going through the x-axis. My equation would be x equals negative 3. And my table of values, again, slightly different. x is always negative 3. y can be anything. So here in this table, the x value doesn't change, but y can be anything. And there's our two special cases for horizontal and vertical lines. Horizontal lines have a slope of 0. Vertical lines have a slope that is undefined.